and his name is Martin Parnell. And Martin is a four-time Guinness World Record marathon runner who has competed 250 marathons in one year. He deserves a very, very warm welcome. Please welcome up, Martin. So tonight, I want to take you on a, a journey through time and space. I want to talk about play through the eyes of children I've met around the world. And I'm going to start in England uh, with a young fellow, Martin Joseph, uh, four, months year, four months old. Now, Martin was what I call a huggable child. Uh, in today's society, I think the politically correct term is fat. Uh, I was a bit of a tub, but my mother loved me. And so the outcome was I wasn't very good at sport, uh, but I loved sport. And I was always picked last for many, many different games. But it's not all bad. 50 years later, uh, I did a cycle trip across Africa in 205. I started from Cairo to Cape Town, and along the way in Sudan, I met a bunch of kids and we had a pickup game of soccer. And it was just amazing. The, the posts were made of old uh, timbers and lashed together, but it was an amazing time. I continued my bike ride into Ethiopia, and down a dusty road, I saw two boys playing table tennis. I just did this, and one of them gave me the bat. We started playing. Within five minutes, there was a hundred children yelling and screaming around that table. And I really felt the power of play with those children. I didn't speak the language, but we spoke the language of sport. Into uh, Kenya, and I passed a, a lake, and the girls, this group of girls, were collecting water. And I saw this scene many, many times. They couldn't play. They didn't have time to play, but whether it was a, a lake or, a, or a, a tap, they were collecting water, and that's what they had to do. Moving into Tanzania, these two boys are Maasai boys, 11 and 12, but they're moving into manhood. Their days of play are over. They have responsibilities to themselves, to their family, and to the community. Things got serious now at the age of 11 and 12. Moving through into Malawi, play comes in many forms. These boys, with the help of their, their family, have made these Flintstone scooters. <laughs> lashed together with leather and strapping, but they were having fun. They were making the absolute best of what they could have, and kids do that. Kids make the best of what they have to play. Moving on into uh, Zambia, I met Laszlo Bad. Laszlo's 12 years old, he made this banjo. And we met him, he sang us a song, uh, there was a group of four of us on our bikes, and then we all went for ice cream, because as a kid, that's what you want to do, is have fun and to be able to play. And he expressed himself through that instrument. Now let's move on five years later to 2010, and I was running my 250 marathons in and around Cochrane and Calgary. Here I'm running at the Silverado uh, community area, and there's Natalie, age three. And she ran a 1K loop. She wanted to be part of something. She was amazing. She, she stuck with me. But kids don't care where they play. This was uh, marathon number 210 at Alex Munro School. It was a cold day. The kids are out there having fun. They don't care if it's cold or if it's raining. Don't wrap them in bubble wrap. Let them get out there. Let them be having fun in, in the outside. <laughs> Marathon number 227. I'm getting tired. But I was at, I was at uh, Westover School. I would run 100 laps around the soccer field. And the kids would join me during the day. They wouldn't shut up. They were chatting to me. They were having fun. And at the end of the day, they donated their pocket money to help other kids, because they knew kids around the world needed help. Six months later, I'm in Benin in West Africa. Uh, right to Play had asked me to go and visit some of the kids that I fundraised for. This group of children had set up a running club. I said, what's the name of your running club? They didn't have a name. One girl talked to the rest of them. She said, we want to be called the Undefeatables. The Undefeatables. These kids were amazing. Coming back from that trip, I knew I had to do more, so I set up Quest for Kids. Ten quests, five years to raise a million dollars and try and help 20,000 children. One of those events was a Guinness World Record for the largest game of hockey. These three young players are Guinness World Record holders, and also they've raised money to help the other children. Another Guinness World Record was soccer, for the longest game of indoor soccer. Jason and Justin wanted to help, so they collected pennies. They filled a canoe full of pennies. 
That is a lot of pennies. Good, a lot of cents. These kids are amazing. They want to play, they want to get outside. One of the other quests was, uh, I wanted to climb Kilimanjaro in 24 hours. I went to Arusha, my wife and I, and we met Marta. And Marta was in an orphanage with her other, uh, the other children. And we played with them, but they could only play in a small area just outside their house. But this is, these are the kids who we want to play. We want to help them. My final quest was across Canada, a road trip. I was trying to do 10 Guinness World Records in a month. One of them was Quidditch. Yes, yes. These lads are dressed up in the Harry Potter gear. And I've got my own outfit as well. And we played Quidditch, and it was an absolute blast. And we had a lot of fun. Uh, another event was ball hockey, floor hockey in Toronto. Uh, this young lad, Daniel, has fragile bone syndrome. Both his legs have broken because he went swimming and played basketball. He couldn't play, but he cheered us on for six hours, even when the rain came falling down. Daniel was there, and look at that smile. He inspires me. Now let's talk about the grandkids. I love grandkids. Kids are good, but I love grandkids. Here's Autumn and Nathan. Nathan's age five, he loves cars. Autumn read my book, Marathon Quest, and wants to climb Kilimanjaro. I said, you're too young at 10. She says, I'm okay, I can wait. So she's training, she's running, she's climbing ropes. She's gonna be ready to head up Kilimanjaro. And this takes me to four month old grandbaby Matthew Connor. He's a huggable child. <laughs> But I love him to bits, and he's on the right path. Here he is at the running room, across Iron Mills, checking out running shoes. <laughs> Trust me, with me around, this boy will not be in front of a, um, a tablet too often. So let's just get to the nub of this. Play is, should not be a luxury, but a right for every child around the world. And it's up to us, you and me and all of us, to make that a reality. Thank you.